ರಮಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋ ತಮೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜೈ almighty supreme lord bhagwan swami narayan divinely present over here our pujya guru ji all santos and devotees jai swami narayan first of all let we revise something what we have discussed in our previous lectures we have discussed what is devotion then we started the types of devotion in types first shravanam then kirtanam and smaranam means remembrance of the form of god now today the fourth fourth type of devotion that is pad sevanam shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pad sevanam now what is pad sevanam this is sanskrit word and the meaning of this word is pad means the legs or feet and sevanam means serving so the simple meaning is that serving the holy feet of god this is what the simple meaning but when we talk about this spiritual aspect we have not considered only simple meaning because we have much more thing to understand and so what is patsyonam take an easy example when a small child who used to hold feet of his father when his father desired to leave his home for job or any other work at that time if boy denied to if boy do not uh, does not desire to go his father outside from his house so what he did the boy always used to spread his both of hands and uh, round around his uh, around the legs of his father so even though father has more more power than his son he cannot even walk even a step even though a boy has tightly hold feet of his father but the boy cannot able to stop his father because the father has more power than the boy but still father cannot walk even a step similarly when as a devotee of god we hold the feet of bhagwan bhagwan cannot walk even a step from us this is what the real meaning of pad sevanam because we all are the son of bhagwan bhagwan is the father of all so when we hold the holy feet of bhagwan bhagwan can never even for a fraction of second remain away from us this is what our devotion if we hold by heart the holy feet of bhagwan then bhagwan always remain with us
but when boy holds his father's leg at that time the sentiment of the heart of that boy that is totally different and when a devotee holds the feet of bhagwan at that time his sentiment is also totally different from the boy's sentiment what types of devotee sentiment at the time of his devotion means when he holds the feet of bhagwan take an example when in our history we all know about our great epic mahabharat at the before the beginning of the battle as a part of a strategy both side the leaders of both side of army they decided to attain support from other states other countries and for attaining the support from the power of bhagwan sri krishna who was at the time king of dwarka so both from the side of pandavas their representative arjun went to dwarka on the other hand on the side of kaurava their representative duryodhan also went to dwarka to attain some powers some militaries some weapons from the other country and that is dwarka so both of them went to dwarka and at that time when they reach sri krishna bhagwan was lying on his bed at that time arjun was there arjun decided to sit near the feet of bhagwan and on the other hand duryodhan used to duryodhan liked to sit near the head of bhagwan now what happened after some time when bhagwan wake up his first sight goes on arjun but not on duryodhan and bhagwan ask arjun why are you coming here what may i help you then arjun ask i want your support in the great battle on the other hand duryodhan was also there so he said i was first in your room so please give me help i am your first candidate but what happened we know duryodhan desire only military powers of bhagwan and so he attained the same but arjun had from trust from belief in the holy feet of bhagwan so even though he did not attain any military power from the bhagwan but still he had holy feet of bhagwan he had victory on the other hand let we see this topic with another perspective as a hindu when we organize any ritual at the time whether we perform yagna or whether we perform maha puja or any other pujan of bhagwan at the time we used to offer bhagwan tulsi beads uh tulsi leaves uh flower or flower petals or fruits 
what if we have none of such things instead of such things we use uncooked rice to offer bhagwan at the time we offer all these things to the holy feet of bhagwan so when we what is meaning of such rituals to offering such things only to the holy feet of bhagwan i think the reason behind that is the is that when we touch the holy feet of bhagwan or when we hold the holy feet of bhagwan or when we worship the holy feet of bhagwan at the time the feeling behind such rituals is that we offer all of ours whatever may be even our own self we offer to bhagwan this is what the sentiment behind the rituals this also should be included in patsyonam not only to serving the holy feet of bhagwan because when we worship the holy feet of bhagwan our feeling of surrenderness towards bhagwan is become firm when whenever we worship holy feet of bhagwan bhagwan reminds us that we are belongs to bhagwan we are not independent we are the servant of bhagwan so our servitude our nature of servitude is also become firm and it's also help us to serving other devotees serving the satsang serving human kinds and serving the society so in this way our devotion other types of devotion also develop but what is the importance of worshiping the holy feet of bhagwan why should we worship holy feet of bhagwan not the other parts of body no doubt we worship all the form of bhagwan but as a symbolic ritual or as a symbol of worship we always worship or offer anything to the holy feet of bhagwan there is one story there are four patels means patidar of village vaso once they went to vartal to meet sri ji maharaj at that time sri ji maharaj was in an assembly near lake gomti under the tree of mango some sadhus and some devotees also gather over there and in their assembly those four patels those are not a devotee so they went and sat in assembly and after some time they asked maharaj maharaj why are these all the saints and devotees gather over here and they look uh, direct only towards you but not uh, not towards any other things why and they also ask maharaj when we observe your holy feet one small thought arises in our mind that you may be a god but on other time when we see your form your behavior then as our activity you also act like on ordinary human so we cannot believe that you are the god what can be the reason for this then maharaj replied see whatever your belief 
I do not concern with that belief but whether you believe or not but when Virat Brahm the father of Brahma Vishnu and Mahesh he had performed worship of this charanarvin means this holy feet half of, half parad means half of his life span then after this holy feet is uh, before you means on this earth so think if the father of brahma vishnu and shankar he desire to worship bhagwan only to have manifest manifestation on this earth then something remain in worshiping the holy feet of bhagwan whether we realize or not but something that is in the worship of bhagwan's holy feet so think if we had desire to worship the bhagwan's holy feet only to remain bhagwan in this world then if we desire to bhagwan remain in our heart at the time we should also desire to worship the holy feet of bhagwan and we should worship holy feet this story is also written in the swami nivato in the second chapter 46 vat now we understood that we should worship the holy feet of bhagwan but the question is that how should we worship what type of offering we should have to prepare what is the rituals but there is no any specific ritual for that but simply if we have no other things no problem sit in lotus style of indian style for meditation close your eyes imagine bhagwan is sitting before you on very decorated golden sofa place one golden stool for placing the feet of bhagwan take one golden plate place the holy feet of bhagwan in the golden plate you have some milk or some sanctified water from rivers like ganges and other rivers you have add some saffron in it just start with your imagination with your mental worship pour some milk on the holy feet of bhagwan and slightly smear on holy feet of bhagwan then after you may use saffron water for the same thing then you may pour some clean water and then after clean and dry the bhagwan's whole feet this is one thing in which you have no requirement for wealth money you have just spared some time and even you have no time not doubt no problem before sleeping sit down in your bed this consume only your 5 minutes not more than that and if you have some more time bhagwan describe how to worship the bhagwan's holy feet in the 23rd vachanavrut of the last chapter in this vachanavrut bhagwan says one should touch god's holy feet to one's own chest and head but before that bhagwan says
yeah there thereafter one should touch god's holy feet to one's own chest and head during that embrace the sandal would paste on god's body as well as parts from the garlands of flowers may stick to one's own body and kum kumkum may also stick as a result of touching god's holy feet to one's own chest and head so at the same time while meditating smear some sandal wood paste on the feet of bhagwan or kumkum on the feet of bhagwan and with your sentiment with your pure love place both of bhagwan's feet to your chest or place both of bhagwan's feet on your head this is also devotion this is what bhagwan himself preaches how to worship the holy feet of bhagwan now today we desire to worship this type of devotion but in another way let we see the incident of bhagwan himself once upon a time sri ji marad was in loya in the darbar gad there was an assembly of sadhus and brahmacharis at the time sri ji maharaj called vasudevanand brahmachari bhagwan at the time arranged one big dais and ordered brahmachari to sit on the dais and thereafter bhagwan himself was the holy feet of that vasudevan and brahmachari just like a devotee was the holy feet of bhagwan at in the same way bhagwan himself had was the uh, was the holy feet of his sadhu so we can also if we perform this ritual for bhagwan that is good but we can also was the holy feet of bhagwan worship the holy feet of bhagwan but along with bhagwan we also worship the same way the holy feet of sadhu because bhagwan himself had preached us so this verse this devotion of path seonam is very interesting but only when if you every day spare only 5 minutes before sleeping and sit down in meditation for 5 minutes in your bed and perform this ritual worship the holy feet of bhagwan while meditating this is only the benefit of this devotion hari krishna maharaj ni jai now ajit bhagat is giving his lecture on vachanamrit
संत कृपाए सुख उपजे संत कृपा थी सरे काम संत कृपा थी पामी ए पूर्ण पुरुषोत्तम धाम काम दुधा कल्प तरु पारस चिंता मनी चार संत समान ते एक नहीं में मन मा कर विचार हरे कृष्ण महाराज नी जय गणश्याम महाराज नी जय स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय ओ मायरी सुप्रीम लॉर्ड स्वामीनारायण पाथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्यपाद गुरु जी पूज्य नीलकन स्वामी पूज्य ऋषि स्वामी एंड ऑल यू डिवोटीज माय हम्बल जय स्वामीनारायण Just think, as a child, if you were a child, your favorite foods would not be fruits, vegetables, grains, or any kind of healthy foods. It would be foods that would be called junk foods, such as chips, crackers. candy cupcakes cookies these are the possibilities that a child a small child would eat let's take cookies now cookies they're fun to eat but they have a process in making there are certain ingredients involved in making them for example flour sugar butter salt baking soda and chocolate chips when you combined all these ingredients in a certain process in a certain manner then chocolate chip cookies are made but if you take one bowl and just mix everything together that's not the process you're probably wondering why am i talking about food There is a very very important message behind but first understand why I'm talking about this method when you mix these raw materials in a certain fashion then cookies can be made but let's look at the typical scenarios that can go wrong suppose that cookies are baked at a degree of 350 degree fahrenheit in the oven but if you do 400 degrees your cookies will burn suppose you're mixing the batter and you forget to add sugar you make the cookies but when you eat them they're not going to be sweet suppose you forget to add baking soda to the cookies then they will not rise like they're supposed to all these scenarios are typical but why am i telling you this well there's a hidden message even behind making cookies and it's given in bhagwan swami narayan's vachanamrut now in the vachanamrut gadara middle chapter 61st of 61st vachanamrut the heading of this vachanamrut is called nishay niyam and paksh now in this vachanamrut bhagwan talks about the ingredients to become a staunch devotee of bhagwan meaning a firm devotee of bhagwan swaminarayan so just like how we need ingredients to make cookies just not only ingredients but just like how there's a process in making these cookies in the same particular manner there's a process and there's ingredients required in the form of qualities that a devotee needs to become or 
known as a firm devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So today we're going to discuss the Vachanamrut, Gadada Middle Chapter 61st. So first I want to read the first paragraph and then we'll revise and analyze what Bhagwan Swami Narayan is trying to tell us. But while I'm reading and throughout this whole lecture, remember my example of making cookies. Remember my example of certain ingredients that are needed in order to make the perfect cookie. And then you'll understand Bhagwan Swami Narayan's philosophy here. Swami Narayan Hare, Swami Narayan Hare. Thereupon, Sri Jimard said, a person who possesses three attributes, attributes think of as ingredients, can be called a staunch devotee. What are these three attributes? First, is to strictly adhere to the niyams prescribed by one's istadev to such an extent that one would never forsake those disciplines even at the cost of one's life. So number one, the first ingredient is niyams. The second is to have extremely firm faith in God, so much so that one would never sway from it even if others or one's mind would raise doubts. That's number two, which is extremely firm faith. And number three, to be loyal to the Vaishnav devotees whose worship one is to do, just as parents are loyal to their children, a son is loyal to his father, and a mother is loyal to her husband. One who possesses these three attributes can be completely known as a staunch devotee. Now, again, what are our three, three ingredients? Number one is firm faith. Number two, niyam. And number three, loyalty. The heading of the Vachnamur is the same thing as the ingredients. Now, slowly by slowly, Bhagwan in this Vachnamur is going to show the, niya, show the attribute and then what he's going to do is he's going to give the characteristic, just like how he explained. But it's very important to follow along because this is such a deep philosophy that the ancient scriptures, not only in Hinduism, but in the whole world, no, no philosophy is found such like this as the Vachamrut. But Bhagwan condenses it so much makes it so easy for all of us to understand that that's his grace. But now since we're learning in the language of English, I have to still condense it more. So in order for that, I've brought some stories from Bhagwan's time in order for you to better understand these ingredients. After understanding these ingredients, to mix and make a process of these ingredients and make the perfect cookie in the form of a perfect satsangi according to the standards of Bhagwan Swami Nare. So first and foremost, Bhagwan talks about niyams. Now, to strictly adhere to the niyams prescribed by one's God to such an extent that one would never forsake those disciplines even at the cost of one's life. First and foremost, niyams. Niyams are rules. Vows, you can say, converted in English. We go to school, we have rules. Do not run in the hallway. Do not eat gum. No smoking. When we drive our car on the road, there's rules. Do not go over the speed limit of 30. Do not cross this line. Stop at the stop sign. These are all regular day-to-day -day rules that each and every one follows. In the same way, in the spiritual life, Bhagwan has set a boundary, meaning a boundary of rules that he wants his devotees to follow. Okay? Like in Sri Kshapatri, for example, my devotee should not eat onion or garlic. 
This is a niyam, a rule, you can say. Another rule, my devotee should not consume alcohol or liquor. This is another rule. In, th in the same way, when you think of the word niyam, think of rules. That's it. Simple as is. Now, Bhagwan says that a firm devotee who has these kinds of niyam or has this attribute or ingredient would not forsake his own God's niyam, meaning he would not break that rule even at the cost of his life. Meaning, if he had to die, if he had to lose his body, he would lose his body, but he would not break the rules of Bhagwan. For that, I have a great example. Now, 200 years ago, in the time of Sriji Maharaj, there was a devotee by the name of Abesi from the village Lorika. Now, Abesi, before, he was bad. But after having the satsang of Goparan Swami, he became a very staunch and firm devotee. He followed all the niyams prescribed by Bhagwan Swami Narayan, each and every one. Now, he was a king, so not only that, but he had many, many tasks that he had to perform. So one day he went to Jamnagar. Now Jamnagar is a city in Gujarat, a fairly big city. And there he went and he had some work that he had to do. In Jamnagar, the king of Jamnagar was King Jam Saib. That was his name. Now, he had invited him, Abesi, to his palace. So, back in those days, when any guest came, they would throw great parties, lavish parties. They would make good food. They would drink alcohol in the party. And they would enjoy themselves throughout the whole night. This was just a tradition that if any guest came, they would throw a party at the palace. So, King Jam Saib threw a party for Abesi because he had come from a long way. So, Abesi came to the party. Now, he saw and he observed there that all the people there, all the darbars, everyone was drinking alcohol and eating meat, doing those things that were not prescribed by Bhagwan. Now, those darbars saw Abesi and knew that he was a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. They did not like Bhagwan Swami Narayan. So what they did was they took alcohol and they tried to force Abesi to drink this alcohol. Now Abesi was a staunch devotee of Bhagwan, so he refused. He said, I don't want to drink it. So they tried and pressured and pressured him, but Abesi stood strong as a devotee and he said, no, I will not drink this alcohol. Then the Darbars thought of a plan that let's tell King Jam Saib that Abesi is refusing to drink alcohol and this is a dishonor to your party because he is your guest and he is dishonoring you, he is insulting you but not drinking this alcohol. So they went to King Jam Saib and gave him a glass of alcohol and told him to please give it to Abesi. So King Jam Saib went to Abesi and said, Abesi, have a drink of alcohol with me, please. Abesi said, I'm sorry, King, but I cannot. I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. King Jam Saib said, You are my guest. I have thrown this whole party for you. I have done all this for you. I have spent money. You must drink this alcohol or this would be an insult to me. Again, Abesi, with folded hands, said, No, I cannot drink alcohol. I am a devotee of Bhagwan. How can I do this? So, again, Jam Saib kept forcing and forcing and asking him. So, Abesi could not handle anymore. So, Abesi took out his sword. Now, when that happened, all the darbars in the whole palace also took out their swords because they thought that Abesi was going to kill King Jam Saib. But, Abesi, what kind of devotee? What he did was he actually 
kneeled, bowed down to King Jamsaib and held his sword in front of him. King Jamsaib said, what are you doing? Abhisi explained that if you want to have me drink alcohol, then first cut off my head and then you can pour the alcohol in my throat. But I will not drink alcohol as long as I am alive because I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. After hearing this, King Jamsaib, he was surprised that such kind of character, such kind of moral behavior in my palace, Bhagwan Swaminarayan is definitely great because he has created such kind of devotees. And due to that, Abhisi was let go and was also considered to be a great devotee in that time. Now, in this Vachanamur, back to our subject, back to our ingredient, Niyam. What did Bhagwan say? At the cost of one's life, one would not forsake that Niyam. Bhagwan has said, do not, al do not drink alcohol. Abhisi, for his own life, did not let go of his Niyam and even at his cost of his life, he was strong. So the first ingredient finished. Bhagwan is saying, be a strong devotee by holding niyams. Let's move on to the second ingredient. The second ingredient is to have extremely firm faith in God. So much so that one would never sway from it even if others or one's mind were to raise doubts. Firm faith. Faith is something that one needs in religion because it's a foundation. If one wants to build a skyscraper, right now, an example. In 2001, September 11, the two planes that crashed into the Twin Towers completely destroyed those two towers. Many, many people were killed. Everyone knows this incident. After 10 years, that site, which was called Ground Zero, they built a new building called the Freedom Tower. The Freedom Tower's height is 1,776 feet. The year that the United States got its independence from Great Britain. That's the height of the tower. Now, the tower, it's that high. It's known as the second highest building. Yet, I'm sure its foundation is not anything that's made from any kind of, you can say, simple material. Its foundation, it's strong. That's why even at such a height, it can stand. Even if tornadoes or even if 50, 60, 100 mile per hour winds or even if freezing rain or snow comes on it, nothing will happen to the tower because its foundation is strong. In the same way, faith in Bhagwan, faith in the Ekantik Sat Purush, faith in Santos, this is the primary foundation that one needs in order to build a tower to reach Bhagwan. So I'm reminded of the story. Again, 200 years ago, let's go back in the future. Now, many, many saints, Bhagwan had at least 2,000 saints in his time that he initiated himself, traveled around not only Gujarat, but also India to do, you can say, satsang vicharan, or to discourse, to have spiritual discourses, to help understand, to help others understand the glory of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. Many, many santos traveled to India. But inside of Gujarat, again, let's go to Jamnagar. In the district of Jamnagar, saints came to a village. There, at the village, there was a small boy. His name was Dayo. Now Dayo, his father was a farmer by occupation. Dayo had no satsang, but 
by seeing these saints, by seeing their character, Dayo decided to take Panchvartman and become a strong devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, after taking the niyams prescribed by those santos, he became such a devotee that he did Tilak Chamlo every day. He did puja every day. He worshipped God every single day. He did not even drink water before performing puja. This was his process every day. Now his father, he was completely against this. He did not like Dayo doing this because it disturbed his routine. And he thought that I am not a devotee, then why should my son become a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan? So his father first tried to persuade him, meaning, oh my dear son, please, you cannot do this. You're such a small child. I will give you something good to eat. Just let go of this niyams, let go of this puja, tilak channel. That didn't work. So the father got angry at Dayo, said, what are you doing? This is not for you to do at such a small age. You should not be doing this. That didn't work. Dayo stayed strong. He had faith that Santos has given me Panchvaratman and I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So I want to follow each and every rule and I want to have faith in Bhagwan. That didn't work. So lastly, his father beat him up, gave him a sound thrashing, yet no result, no change. So one day, while Dayo was doing his niyams, his father could not bear to see this. So he became so angry at Dayo that he told Dayo that if you do not stop worshipping Bhagwan Swaminarayan, I will kill you. This is what he said, I will kill you. A father saying this to Dayo, Dayo was not even 10 years old, but at such an age, he had such an understanding that this is my Bhagwan and that's it. No other boundaries, you can say no other obstacles ever disturbed him. Now just think, at the age of 10 or even let's say 12, what would we do in his position? If our father told us, you must let go of worshipping Bhagwan, we would let go right away. Or even if our father got a little mad, upset at us, we would let go of Bhagwan. But not Dayo. Dayo was such a devotee that his faith was so strong that, listen, his father told him, I will kill you. Dayo said, I will not, wor I will not stop worshipping Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, his father got so upset, he said, if you do not remove your kanti, and if you do not stop saying Swaminarayan, I will kill you right now and right then. What his father did was tied Dayo to the cart of his yoke. And a yoke is pretty much about, in those times, they had carts. And at the front part of the cart, to steer those bullocks, to steer those uh, heavy animals, there was a rod that was held. It was attached to the cart. Now, what the father did was tied a rope around the rod and stood at the end of the cart. Now, the cart can be lifted, or if you put weight at the, at the end of it, then it would raise, and it would become kind of like, uh, you can say, a slaying or hanging someone on a tree. It's the same fashion. So his father tied him up to the yoke and he said, if you do not stop saying Swami Narayan or if you do not take off your kanti right now, I will kill you. Dayo, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, Swami Narayan, continued, continued. And his father got so upset that he raised the yoke and Dayo was killed at that instant. Look at the faith that Dayo had in Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He had not even met Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He had only met his santos. But by his santos, by having firm faith in those saints, that I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan, his life, 
he put at cost and he died and when bhagwan swaminarayan found this this message out in gadara bhagwan said that i feel very disturbed in my heart but dayo look at his look at, at what kind of faith he had in me and due to that he has gone to my abode akshardham so that's the second ingredient faith and third finally loyalty the third is to be loyal to those vaishnav devotees who worship one's god just as parents are loyal to their children a son is loyal to his father and a wife is loyal to her husband one who possesses these three attributes completely can be called a staunch devotee lastly loyalty loyalty when you think of that word you think of friends you think of your parents immediately because those are the people who are you're most loyal to loyalty means trust you can say in one way to have complete trust in a different person that's pretty much loyalty but such kind of trust that even if one had to die even if one would have become hurt one would let not let go of that loyalty and reminding of this word loyalty i'm reminded of baguji now baguji was the attendant and you can say the bodyguard of bhagwan swami narayan in that time 200 years ago so baguji was a very very strong and you can say kind of a kind of like a soldier he wasn't so fierce in impressing but he did his job right in those days dada khachar had many many fields of agriculture and dada khachar was disturbed by many many dai khats many many people who despised bhagwan swami narayan so what those people would do was rob his crops or they would destroy his field so no crops would grow there So Bhagwan Swami Narayan set Baguji there to protect those fields so that no one would come because they saw Baguji and they would run away. So one day Ban Khachar he was completely against Dada Khachar and Bhagwan Swami Narayan so he sent two brothers who were also similar to Baguji meaning fierce very strong to kill bhagwan swami narayan and to kill baguji now when they approached baguji baguji saw that these two brothers were here to kill me so immediately he said if you are here to fight i am ready but you will not touch this field or you will not enter this darbar gar so baguji started to fight with these two brothers baguji was only one and there was two brothers that came to hurt him in the fight baguji became very very wounded and damaged he killed one of the brothers and the other brother ran away but baguji had 18 wounds all over his body and he was almost in the position that he was going to die so bhagwan swamiran brought him back to Dada Khachar's darbar after hearing that he had protected the field of Dada Khachar this was showing his loyalty he was loyal he did not run away he saw there's two brothers two people against me but he was loyal he was brave he didn't run away but he actually fight against them so bhagwan came and bhagwan himself stitched him up bhagwan himself wrapped his wounds and what bhagwan actually did was in the morning and at the night time aarti would go on dhun would go on kirtan but bhagwan had all the sounds stop no bell ringing no musical instruments why if baguji awoke don't then those stitches from his wounds would open up because baguji was such kind of devotee that he could not miss aarti Baguji was such kind of devotee he could not miss dune 
Whenever he listened to Dun or whenever he heard that Arti was going on, he would immediately go to that area. But at that position, he was in no position to move. But Bhagwan had everything stopped for Bhaguji. Proving that Bhaguji's loyalty was of no normal standards. Just think, now I've given you an example 200 years ago, but I want you to put yourself in this position. If Bhagwan, or if the sadhu of Bhagwan, had told you that this is our mandir, you must sit outside and protect it from any bad people, no matter what. Imagine what we would do if not only one or two, but if five people came, imagine what we would do. We would run away or we would do something else. But Bhaguji did not do this, proving his loyalty. In conclusion, wrapping it up, these three ingredients prescribed by Bhagwan Swaminarayan is the way to become a staunch, firm, and perfect devotee according to Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So back to that cookie. If we want to bake the perfect cookie, we must have faith, we must have loyalty, and we must have niyam. So after these ingredients are mixed together in the perfect process according to this Vachnamrut, we would have the perfect cookie in the form of a devotee. Saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan. Sri Patim Sri Dharam Sarvadevisuram Bhakti Dharmatmanam Vasudevam Hare Madhavam Kesvam Kamdam Ka Swaminarayanam Nilakantham Bhaji Hare Krishna Maharaj Nije